again out there. Did you miss us? It's another edition of the Adam Jones Podcast. Adam may not have missed me. I missed him. Welcome in. We're presented by the Baltimore Banner. Just that much. I'm Jerry Coleman. He's, of course, the five-time MLB All-Star Adam Jones. It is episode number 72, AJ. We're going to be joined shortly by Orioles outfielder Kyle Stowers. Looking forward to that. We'll also talk about Gunnar Henderson's rapid start and your pending trip to the U.S. Actually, you're here, but you're also heading to another country, India. Can't wait to hear about that. And we'll include another rousing edition of Socially Speaking, where someone will qualify for a Lido Pizza gift card. But as always, we begin with our featured guest. He is sponsored by Jimmy's Famous Seafood. He's Kyle Stowers, a San Diego native, just like Adam Jones. Kyle, we appreciate you taking the time and joining this podcast. You sure made a case for that opening day roster when you blasted, what, seven home runs in 14 spring training games. Instead, you were eventually sent, of course, down to the minor leagues. You're back up with the big club now. But honestly, going back, how surprised were you learning that news after the performance you had during, you know, March and uh, part of February? Yeah. Yeah. First off, thanks for having me on. <clears throat> Appreciate it, guys. Good to be talking with you. Um, yeah, I, I I don't know if surprised is the word, uh, just because you you look around the clubhouse um, and there's just a lot of talent, you know, Norfolk, Baltimore, there's just a lot of good players. Um, I definitely thought I made a strong case to break camp with the team and, um, you know, was uh, really optimistic that I would be on this team uh, coming out of opening day. Um, but that being said, I don't know, uh, not really surprised, like I said, just because you, you look around and, and you know that there's going to be tough decisions to be made, you know, somewhere. And, you know, I was just the one that got the, uh, you know, the cards didn't go my way that time. Um, our boy, our boy Kyle sends his, sends his love. I'm going to yeah. tell you, uh, screw Christian. We beat you guys. You guys used to be in Eastern League. I don't know if you guys are still in Eastern League. But... Uh, not, not anymore. I, I did play uh, – you're Morris, right? Yeah. yeah so we, we, my we senior got, year, we, we got y'all. Y'all okay. had Daniel Magnus and Brian Schrader. They were nasty. Jay Schrader's yeah. son. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I want to talk about the minors. Um, you know, obviously I was there in spring training and watched – everybody's performance watched you got to you know get on the backfields with you and your lineup in triple a you guys raked is it was there like again we, i asked kirsch at this too is was there like a desire for you guys to continue to put up these numbers continue to push each other and pump each other up yeah 100 percent. i think there's definitely a little bit of you know feeding off of each other um when you see you know like they always say hitting is contagious right and uh when you got you know it really started with the beginning of the season with Jackson in the leadoff spot, you know, felt like he was on base. I mean, he hit a home run the first at bat of the season and, you know, we were kind of rolling from there and uh, you know, no matter where we're at, you know, whether it's here in the big leagues um, or in Norfolk and triple a, you know, um, we believe that we're big league players. And so um, the standard is to, to play to that expectation. And, and I think we are doing so. You didn't let any of that slow you down. You had tremendous power numbers, and I mean, you had 160 at bats in AAA, and you had 11 tanks and 11 doubles. Um, what, what's your what's your regiment? You know, what what is your your uh, pregame regiment? Yeah, I, I generally um, like to get in pretty early in, into the cage, and and you know, kind of working through um, like early on, like darts, flips, kind of just some feel things, and then um, as we progress into BP, you know everything for me in BP is trying to control ball flight. Um, as someone who generally doesn't have issues putting the ball in the air in game, I, I try to, you know, actually train at a lower, lower ball flight. I think that's a, a very healthy thing for my swing. Um, and then from there, I'm looking at who we're facing that day. And, and, you know, I'm kind of looking at two things, you know, how I think they want to attack me, um, like with their strength or what I feel like where their strength may line up with, you know, a weakness I have. And then also the, where I think I can handle a mistake, you know, that's um, kind of the thing that I like to look for is, is um, you know, which pitch I feel like I have a really good um, matchup on or chance on. And so I'm kind of working through those two shapes, I would say. So, um, and generally every day, you know, picking two shapes on the machine that is to, to work on. Kyle, do you believe that staying up with the major league club solely relies on you or are there other mitigating factors? We had we had Heston Kerstad on a few weeks ago. I felt like he should have gotten more at bats. 
He didn't because of the circumstances. So I don't know if the predicament is the same for you. You've had a bigger taste of Major League life than Heston. How do you feel about all this being called up this time around and where you stand? Yeah, I, I think certainly as players, we, you know, all want to feel like we are in control. Um, and that, you know, uh, when we're playing our best baseball, that it doesn't really matter, you know, the other circumstances that are going on. Um, obviously, um, there's so much that goes into it uh, with, you know, putting together a 26-man big league roster, you know, um, for, you know, night in, night out, and then over a stretch of time. Uh, but that being said, you know, um, even if you're not getting, you know, every single day at bats, you know, there's still at bats getting sprinkled in and then you have a quality at bat in that time, you know, you're going to earn more opportunity. And so I think that's how I like to look at it is that, um, you know, even if it's not every day at bats that those, you know, those pinch hit at bats or those, those spot starts, you know, they, they do carry weight if you put together quality at bats. Um, I want to ask, do they inform you the night before if you're going to play? I was in Arizona in 19, and they always let us know, you know, about 10, 15 minutes after the game that uh, if you're playing or not the next day. And that, that, for a guy who was older, that was great. And I think for a younger guy, I think he'd be great, too, to where he's showing up to the ballpark. Like, oh, am I going to play? Buck did, Buck did that. Lineup show up at, like, 357. You know what I mean? <laughs> Buck was bad with it. So, like, do they inform you if uh, you're going to play the, the next day? Uh most of the time. Yeah. It, 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 there's definitely not every time, but, um, you know, I think, uh, like I, I'm in agree agreement with you. It's nice to know, you know, and you can kind of show up, at least when you show up to the ballpark, if you have an idea of what is you know expected of you that day. Um, because you know, there's some days and obviously, you know, it depends. Um, you know, obviously like veteran guys have a better idea of what they need to get, um, in on a given day. And so, um, that being said, like, you know, I feel like, you know, um, even though I haven't spent a ton of time in the big leagues myself, I, you know, feel like I have a good idea of what I need and, and what role I'm, you know, going to be having that day um, definitely kind of impacts what I feel like I need to get ready or, and more so specifically when I feel like I need to be peaking um, and when I need to be, you know, most ready to go. So um, yeah, sometimes most of the time we have an idea of what we're doing that day. How would you uh, describe yourself, Kyle? Because you come across as a quiet type and I don't know if you're just trying to acclimate and, you know, maintain your role and keep your head down inside that clubhouse. But tell us a little bit more. I mean, you've been in the majors several times now, so I don't think you're pretty shy about things. Yeah. Um, you know, I feel like I'm a, a, a good teammate first and foremost. Um, you know, I, I try to, you know, be a, a person of increase in the clubhouse, um, whether I'm playing or not playing and, and just, you know, try to, um, I think of someone who's relational, I, you know, I love uh, getting to connect with the guys on the team and establishing those friendships. Um, and, you know, cause I think, you know, when you have, and you, you see it a lot in obviously college and in the big leagues and the minor leagues, you know, I, I feel like we've created that atmosphere here with the Orioles is when you, you know, when, when you have these good relationships inside the clubhouse, you know, you, when you're not going well yourself, you're still pulling for other guys and it creates more of that team atmosphere. Um, and so I think in this game, it's so easy to be so obsessed with how you're doing or how you're feeling. And so when you have those relationships, it's just, you know, things that get you outside of yourself. And I think it's um, very healthy. You see this hat. I can't break 80. Heard you, <laughs> heard you got addicted to golf. And oh, a lot of people God. can't break 80. That's like a 1% of people that play golf. So, um, how's, how's the golf game? Uh, I'll just say I need that hat as well. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you would play 100 uh, and then 90, just all different things. But, I mean, uh, getting away from baseball just a little bit, what do you do in your free time? You know, just, you get to have some, you get to be in some cool cities. And, uh, yes, what do you like to do when Kyle is just not playing baseball? Yeah, so this year I've had my, my wife and my dog with me. This trip, they're not here, but, um, you know, we were getting out and walking around the cities with our dog, and and, um, and it's been actually so good. Um, kind of mentioned it, you know, at the last question. It's, you know, having them around has made me feel like more of a person off the field, you know, and getting outside of myself. And um, and so like to just get out, walk around, uh, get some sun on, on the skin, and, and I think it helps me be more awake when I go to the field rather than just sit in bed and scroll on my phone. And, um, and so that's, I like to, I like to find a breakfast spot, um, uh, get some coffee. Um, and then when we're in the hotel, it's, it's different TV shows. That's kind of been my form of, uh, 
escape away from the field at post game and, and a little bit pregame too sometimes. Do baseball players still watch soap operas during the day? That used to be a big thing when I was covering teams. Uh, no, I feel like every TV here in the big leagues is MLB network. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. That wasn't around when I was growing up. Yeah. Uh, I did want to ask you, you know, Colton Kowser has cultivated this cult following with this uh, pasture section. Yeah. Uh, maybe a stour power section could be in the future. I love that. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. And a little right center. Yeah. That'd be great. Yeah. I'm trying to find at bats for you. Uh, I mean, obviously, it's something that's, you know, we were talking with Kershaw about it. It's, it's obviously, as a competitor, it's frustrating because, you know, the, what you want to do is compete. You want to play and get in there. Um, and also seeing Kowser, we just mentioned him, how he's taken advantage of his opportunity. Um, how are you watching, you know, when you're on the bench watching, what are you really focusing on and paying attention while you're just on, while you're not playing? Yeah, uh, definitely the first four or five innings, um, just kind of watching how they're, you know, pitching other, pitching the guys, you know, and, and kind of, um, I like to look at the report um, when I'm coming off the bench of the starter and just kind of thinking about like, what would, you know, my plan be that day and then trying to pay attention how they're going after guys. Um, you know, you, you bring up Colton and I think the coolest thing that I see with him and that I saw um, when he first started getting going is that he's just being himself. And I, and I know that's like, you know, it's like a chicken or egg scenario. Like what happens first, do you start playing well, or do you start, then you feel more confident or do you feel more confident and then you start playing well, but he just, whatever happened, he just looks like he's being himself. He's such a goofy guy. Um, and he's doing goofy things. Like my favorite thing that I saw this year was when he, uh, just, we, his word was yeeted Craig's, uh, uh, save ball that had significance into the fountain in Kansas city. What does that and even I, mean? I, I, I just, he just threw it. He, he said he was getting chirped by a fan. Uh, and so when he made the final out, you know, he was just like, you know, basically kick rocks to that fan and uh um and but it like just doing things like that and then he, he said that immediately i mean you guys i'm sure saw he, he goes wait a second that might have been important and that that's just that's just colton you know what i mean just doing things like that and it, it's so cool to see and and like you said he is running with this opportunity he's been getting and, and we've all seen it like coming up with him like we we all know what he's capable of and and so to see him execute here at this level um, is I'm really happy for him. And then it's also, you know, really encouraging for us guys who are coming up because, you know, we all have a lot of confidence in ourselves too. And we know that, you know, when preparation meets opportunity, you know, you know, things can get rolling. Stay tuned for more of the Adam Jones podcast with special guest Orioles outfielder Kyle Stowers. But first, this word from our sponsors. The Adam Jones podcast is brought to you by our friends at the Weinman Company. Everyone knows Greenmount Station in Hampstead, but did you know that at Greenmount Station you can bet seven days a week just like you're at the track? With in-person teller windows and state-of-the-art touchscreen kiosks. And with Greenmount Station's brand new Bet Park sports book, you can bet on all other sports as well, wherever you are in Maryland. Spreads, money lines, live bets, props, parlays, and teasers. The best Bet Park's Maryland mobile app is now live for Apple and Android devices, so you'll never miss your next big score. Just search for Bet Parks MD in the Apple App Store or on Google Play. And for a limited time, 21 and over Adam Jones podcast listeners can get a $75 gift card to Greenmount Station simply for opening a new account with promo code GMS and a minimum $50 initial deposit. $75 gift card for new users in Maryland only. 21 and over only. Please play responsibly. For help, call 1 800 Gambler. The Adam Jones podcast is brought to you by Jimmy's Famous Seafood. Charm City's favorite crab cake destination. Local sports fan? Experience the ultimate pregame party at the tailgate. Cheer on the Ravens with iconic live performances, an open bar, and mouth-watering eats. Can't make it? No worries. Bring the same food that caught the attention of the Food Network right to your doorstep. Shipping East Coast recipes nationwide. Jimmy's Famous Seafood is the official sponsor of the guests appearing on the Adam Jones Podcast. Maryland Lottery. Because fun looks good on you. Right now, play our exciting new multiplier scratch offs for a chance to win up to $2 million. Fun. 
If you received ERC funds, listen closely. The IRS has 10 years to audit your claim, but you only have until March 22nd to get taxpayer relief, and the clock is ticking. If you're losing sleep over a possible audit, we'll review your claim. If you made a filing error, we'll set things right. If you're being audited, we'll provide expert representation. The IRS Voluntary Disclosure Program ends March 22nd. You deserve peace of mind. Visit SaveMyERC.com to schedule a consultation today. That's SaveMyERC.com. Effective Solutions, your one-stop shop for commercial contracting. Everything from excavation and site development to emergency remediation and restoration. Effective Solutions specializes in many forms of commercial and mixed-use construction. With a dedicated staff and a commitment to quality, Effective Solutions delivers every time. There are a lot of ways to make whiskey, but there's only one way to make Jack Daniels. At Jack Daniels, they charcoal mellow every drop, only using water from Cave Spring Hollow in Tennessee. When you make your own label, you make everything else yours too. But we don't need to tell you that, do we? Make it count. Jack Daniels. Please drink responsibly. Tennessee whiskey, 40% alcohol by volume. Jack Daniel Distillery, Lynchburg, Tennessee. Jack Daniels and Old Number 7 are registered trademarks 2022. Jack Daniels, all rights reserved. The Adam Jones Podcast welcomes Relief Shop. Shop Maryland's largest adult use and medical cannabis menu located at 1114 Cathedral Street in Baltimore with medical delivery available throughout Maryland seven days a week only at Relief Shop. Your fun awaits at Hollywood Casino Perryville. Feed the whole crew with something for everyone from cheesesteaks to crab cake sandwiches. Plus, ask how you can get a $15 dining credit. Get in on the gaming action with the hottest slots and your favorite table games like blackjack, roulette, and poker. Free live shows every Friday and Saturday. Come experience non-stop fun and excitement only at Hollywood Casino Perryville. Hey, Baltimore. Monument City Brewing has been crafting the best beer in Maryland since 2014. Located at 1 North Haven Street in Baltimore, you've seen us at the ballpark. Now drop by our tasting room. Open Thursday through Sunday with events, music, and great food trucks. And this year, we are honored to collaborate with Adam Jones and the Adam Jones Podcast with Simply AJ Ballpark IPA, available throughout the baseball season. It's going to be a great year, Baltimore. Visit us online at MonumentCityBrewing.com or follow us on Instagram at Monument City Brewing. Hey, you work hard, I work hard, and we all like to save money. That's why we need the Royal Farms Rofo Rewards app to get more value for our hard-earned money. With the app, you earn royalty points on every purchase, can place mobile orders for quick pickup, plus a discount at the gas pump with Rofo Pay. We all like to save money, and with the Rofo Rewards app, we do. Real fresh, real fast, Royal Farms. It's the perfect time to check out a spacious and reliable new Toyota SUV. Like a RAV4, with available all-wheel drive and plenty of cargo space, you'll go from errands to adventures in no time. Plus, available features like wireless charging will keep you connected. Or check out a Highlander with seating for up to eight. It's a hub for family adventure. Your Toyota dealer is getting new vehicles in stock regularly. So don't wait. Find deals on a RAV4 or Highlander at buyatoyota.com. Toyota, let's go places. The Bowie Bay Sox are back in town this week. This weekend on Friday and Saturday nights, enjoy the area's best fireworks show following the Bay Sox game. And Sunday, come out early on Sunday Family Fun Day. Fans can play catch in the outfield grass and get autographs from select Bay Sox players. With free parking and a great game day atmosphere, the Bay Sox lead the region in affordable family fun. Get your tickets today at BaySox.com. And now back to the Adam Jones Podcast. And you talked about the brotherhood. It goes back to Norfolk, uh, guys, with Kerstad, Jackson Holiday, Kowser, et cetera. You've seen some of these guys come up and be sent back down, like Jackson and Heston, as we mentioned, Kowser Estate. Are you able to pick the brains of all these guys and maybe gather some intel that maybe can help elevate your career? Yeah, I think the the biggest thing is is the the support system um you know because getting optioned is is it hurts it's it's really hard you know it's it's a one of the you know unique parts of of this game you know especially when you're in the early part of your career um and so you know you've seen it with you know guys like adley and gunner who you know haven't experienced it that way but you know now the team's in a position where it's like hey every night really matters you don't know you know, whether this, the AL East title is going to come down to one game or not to, towards the end of the year. So every night there's a sense of urgency, which is so fun. And, and so, but that being said, you know, there's a lot of moves being made and, and when guys go back down, we're there to, yeah, like you said, like um, take each other's brains on like how we can improve in that situation. And I think it, it, it centers with that around that support. And 
um, having guys that, you know, can you can relate to. Um, you're a very smart guy, uh, Stanford. Um, obviously, two months uh, until the trade deadline. And, you know, you, you know the business of the game. And it's a log jam for letters. A lot of outfielders, a lot of prospects from the Orioles organization. We all know that. It's a fantastic organization. But now you're starting to see the log jam, you know, really take place because you're 26. You need to be in the major leagues. Do you have any thought in your mind uh, or even just in general conversation, you ever thought of, um, you know, maybe I might be traded, maybe I'm not, you know, because the smartest thing, I got traded. And I was like, I'm going to be a Mariner for the rest of my life. I got option down and I got traded. Mm -hmm. So do you have you just like any thought of that uh, crept in your mind? Because you, your numbers suggest that you know that you understand that you're playing for all 29, for all 30 teams. That's what, when you're in the minors, you're playing for everybody. When you're bigs, you're playing for that team. When you're in the minors, you're playing for everybody because things happen like that. Yeah, I, I think that's, you said it best. It's the reality of this business, you know, and, and things can happen, you know, in the blink of an eye. And, and you know, you see with all the time, guys get, you know, a change of setting and um, it's just, just the reality of it, you know. And I think for me, I try to fight those thoughts. You know, I, I'm obviously – you know, well aware of, you know, the fact that, you know, you could be in a completely different place at, on any day. And, and, and so for me, I just, I, I, I don't mean to give you a, a cheesy answer, but I really do try to fight those thoughts because I just don't think they necessarily help me with right now and, and where I'm currently at. And so, um, you know, I, I just try, you know, it's cheesy again, I'm sorry to give the cheesy answer, but just be where my feet are um, and, you know, take what I have today and, and, and take care of today. And, and so I, I fight them. I, I, I try my best to just not think about it. And, and um, there's nothing more I want than to, to break out with this team, with this group. It's, I mean, you want to be on a winning team and the fact that, you know, a good majority of these guys have come up with. Um, so I, I, you know, I would love nothing more than to, to be here for a long time. And obviously that might not happen and it might, so we'll see what happens and just, um, just trying to, to break out here. True. Have you spoken with DL or Ortiz about their change of scenery? Because they're both getting great opportunities to uh, to play. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I, I. It's been a couple of weeks, but um, you know, uh, I've definitely st kept tabs on them and and stayed in touch with them here and there. Um, you know, uh, I think is, is is DL still on the IL? I saw that he went on the IL after throwing against us. Um, that was a that was a crazy moment to watch him pitch against. Uh, to pitch against us it was like the most like conflicting thing because you're like oh man like that that was you know you, you went to battle with that guy for you know a couple of years and and then now he's you know in another jersey um and then and then obviously joey is just uh tearing the cover off the ball right now and, and just really happy for them you know um those guys both are so talented um and such good good guys um you know just really happy to see that they're running with the opportunity um, you know, but definitely, definitely weird to see them playing against the Orioles when, when they were in Baltimore. Kyle, the uh, whole hydration station thing as one of the younger guys on the club is, is it your chore to maintain this thing or travel with it or keep a hold of it? I asked Heston a similar question. Didn't really get much of a response, but I saw the Mariners had something like a trident in town last weekend. Mm -hmm. And I, I mean, I don't know how they get these things around. I know you don't have to go through the TSA usually because they wouldn't allow it. Uh, yeah. Um, no, I'm on a uh, card table duty right now. So I, I'm, I'm handling, I'm handling the card table. I don't know who's on the, the hydration station, but I could tell you what I want to, I want to take part in that thing very, very badly. So um, hopefully I'm, <laughs> you know, uh, hopefully I'm sucking down some water here soon. Let's go. Yeah. We can't wait. We appreciate you taking the time here, especially on a game day to join us on the Adam Jones podcast. Nothing but the best of luck to you this season. Yeah, thank you guys for having me. Huge honor. Um, had a great time. Thank you, brother. We appreciate Kyle Stowers joining us. He was fabulous, and we hope he sticks with the Major League Club for a long, long time. We'll move on to our For the Birds portion of the podcast, sponsored by our friends at the Maryland Lottery. When you play the Maryland Lottery, set limits never play when you're stressed and know your odds of winning. To learn more, visit mdlottery.com slash play responsibly. Must be 18 years or older to play. And I want to get into Gunnar Henderson, who's over the over the 18 years of age, just by a, a few years. But <laughs> no sophomore slump for this kid. I mean, can he lead the major leagues in home runs, Adam? And at the point that we're talking right now, he is on top of that list. And coming I mean, off this Rookie of the Year campaign, I mean, 
he's been clearing that left field wall with ease, even though they moved it back. He, I, I think I said he was the one that was going to do it. I think I said him or Soto, because just that know their power that way. He's a, he's a special, special player, and I, I love that they're like again they're not messing with him, and they they are just playing short every day. Obviously, you get to see how impactful he is on both sides of the ball. Um, to lead the league in home runs, can he do it? Yeah. Oh, for sure. I mean, it's, it's, it, it's if he plays 150 games, I firmly believe he he can do it. He's that strong. Um, it's all to me. It, 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 the guys in New York, they I think they have they always have some sort of advantage because I mean, if Judge just gets hot for a weekend and hits three pop ups to right field at Yankee Stadium, like you know things can things can happen quick over there in Yankee Stadium because of the ballpark. So, but I, I thoroughly believe he could do it. I mean, he, he's he's unbelievable. The only thing we're trying to get though is 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 you want more guys on base. Um, there's a lot of solos. That's not his fault. He had a three run tank in St. Louis, um, but it it's you know you want the you want the uh, Earl Weaver special. Solo home runs are awesome, especially when you lead off the game. Those are great. But I think everybody wants like the two and three run home runs. So got to get uh, hope we get the bottom of the lineup getting on base more because when the bottom of the lineup is on, when Mullins, Mateo are, are on base. Havoc happens because those guys are itching to run. Well, he's on pace for 69 home runs as we speak. If he gets there, that would be phenomenal. But trying to become the only Oriole besides Cal Ripken Jr. to win Rookie of the Year and then MVP the next year. And we'll see how that plays out because that's a long way down the road. No, not really. I mean, right now, I mean, you, you can argue that he is. Yeah, he, with Soto. You definitely have a, a great argument for it right yep. now. So, uh, and then you add his defense. You know, that's the part is like, okay, you look at all the offense. The defense and base running is so huge. Soto doesn't have those those traits like Gunner does. It's a separator. Yeah. Yeah. So it's a big separator. I'm, like, everybody is offense, offense, offense. Well, you know, unless you're a full time DH, you got to go out there and play the other side of the ball. And I think that he's playing the other side of the ball at a higher clip than Soto's playing the other side of the ball. Offensively, they're both just disgusting. Uh, but I think Gunner's defense and other uh, attributes, athleticism, I think puts him uh, just in a, just in a different category. What about the state of the bullpen, AJ? It looks like they're headed towards a six-man rotation now that Grayson is back being a part of it. Does the bullpen need any help before the trade deadline to be championship caliber in your estimation? Um, you know, again, I always was, was always was a person that trusted my guys, you know, I always want to be like, Hey, these are my guys. I go to battle with you. You know, I don't ever want to see a uh, move made. I always want, you know, we're talking, with, we're talking about that with, with Kyle about, you know, do you think about moves made? And, you know, I always wanted to go there with my guys, but at the same time, you know, watching how things, things move and make and watching other moves that uh, have helped teams get better. You, you have to think like that. You have to be like, Hey, if you know, Obviously, with Elias and, and great job of what they're doing with scouting, uh, there's definitely eyes everywhere. You know, people keep talking about this kid, the young kid, Mason Miller from um, from Oakland. Hey, he's got five years more of control. Why in Sam Hill would they trade him? Unless you're getting like four players back for him. Like, there's big, makes no sense to trade him. Um, but, you know, again, I, I trust my guys, but there might, there might have to be a move made. And again, there's going to be guys that are going to be sellers. So there's going to be teams that uh, that won't be in it um, come trade deadline. So it's just a matter of who fits. Um, you know, I don't. I know that they don't want to give up a lot, especially if you're just getting a bullpen on for a year. We gave up a lot to get uh, Miller, we gave up uh, Rodriguez. So you know, you just don't want to do those kind of deals where you get a guy for two months and you know another guy has uh, you know eight, 10, eight to ten year career or no, that's ten years. Ago. Damn. So yeah. you know, damn, ten years ago. So yeah, you just you, you. I think there might be a move made. I mean, I guess we're all just guessing. Yeah. But um, you, and when it comes to the playoffs, you know that you're not going to score nine runs a game. Uh, each out is valuable, and that last one needs to be made. So um, there might be a move to be made. You never know. Uh, there's going to be some sellers though. We'll continue this conversation for sure as we get cro closer to that uh, July trade deadline. All right, let's fly beyond Baltimore for our national and sometimes international perspective brought to you by our friends over at Lee Leaf Medical Marijuana Dispensary, where they go above and beyond to help you, the patient. Now, Adam is in the U.S. this week for a little bit, very <laughs> briefly. One of the reasons was for the Jimmy's Famous Seafood Golf Tournament. You're coming to hack it up and 
can't break 80, of course. And then this follows a trip to Boston. You're watching some pro bouncy ball. And then next on the docket, we'll get to because you're leaving the country once again. Yes. Uh, well, I mean, I gotta, I'm got. i going up to the East-West game this weekend on uh, on Saturday in Cooperstown. So that's going to be fantastic. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm going to uh, going to Mumbai and I'm going to judge a cricket contest. Uh, it's like a cricket baseball uh, contest and judge some swings, take some hacks with the cricket, learn how to play it, learn the rules and visit another city. Uh, it's going to be hot. It's going to be hot, hot. And uh, we land in, it's crazy, the schedule is wild because we land in um, back in Barcelona on Monday at seven in the morning. And then we have a one thirty flight to Mumbai. So we're just going to drop our kids off and go. <laughs> well, you'll document the trip and how the airlines yeah. treat you. We can't wait to see that. I will admit India. Sure. Should be a good one. India, not on my bucket list. Not not up well, there on the bucket list. I mean, it's it's a it's a first off, it's a lot of people. Yes. It, it is a lot of people. Um, conditions can be different, but I'm going to go and experience it. Me, I'll go anywhere, especially they pay for it. What? But uh, no, it's it's going to be a great time. I understand cricket's a lot like baseball in some respects. Maybe you'll, you'll, you'll discover yeah, I, that. I always said that. I always thought that, you know, when you're playing games like that, I think the cricket players, I think they could play baseball. And I would definitely like to – understand the game more and understand how to how to fully play it so i'm gonna get my i'm gonna get my shot on um on wednesday next wednesday and it's gonna be fun it's gonna be real fun it's gonna be hot that might be the only sport i don't wager on cricket <laughs> all right we'll move on from there shout out hollywood casino perryville uh we advanced to socially speaking this is where we answer a tweet or social media post and a chance when you enter to win a $50 gift card, compliments of Lido Pizza, a proud partner of the Baltimore Orioles. We are on social media at Adam Jones Pod on all the platforms at Adam Jones Pod. Now, this week, AJ, you put out a post on X. I guess you were bored flying to the US. And you asked the question for this generation Can an athlete do your job better than you can do theirs? Please think on this. As many jobs are hard and confusing, but this is valid. I've asked friends that don't play sports, and some say they can. I call bull, but I want to hear from you. And we got a few replies. That's uh, let's one. start with this one. Alan, at Mason Fanatic, responded, that's really hard to evaluate. It would be a comically disastrous performance in both directions. I'm not top 1% in my field or anything, but I have some skills that may even, in my field, fail to master. And it's taken decades of practice since I was a preteen to get there. Interesting. I mean, I, I, that's why I asked it, because, again, we talk so much and you see social media, every pitch and everything is so evaluated and people just talk crap all day on social media. It's like, like, can you do that job better? And the answer is no. The answer all is right. no. Well, the answer, no. Yeah. Just, I'll, just have simply, a, I'll have a response coming yeah, up. It's simply course. no. But again, no. Bruce at <laughs> Bruce McClure NH wrote. My evolution as a fan has also included coming to the realization that my baseball career ended midway through my first Little League season for a reason. I stink. Seriously, over the years, I've matured into an understanding that these guys and gals are experts in their field. I'm an expert in mine, and I'm fairly certain an exchange of jobs would not go well. I mean, of course. I just think, that, again, I've said this before. We don't idolize athletes like we used to because we have social media, so we have the access to them. But – we idolized Cal Ripken. We idolized Tony Gwynn. If Cal Ripken had played in social media era, how would that play? How he still would have put up great numbers, yeah. but how would it, would they have talked a lot of crap about him? Yeah, yeah. You know when's, what I mean? When's this guy going to take a night off? Yeah, he's yeah. setting the record. What the right. hell are you talking about? Like, so what I'm saying is like we idolize those guys now. We only idolize Otani, Judge, and a few other guys because we have such access to them. So we don't even get a chance to really, you know, uh, love our athletes anymore. Well, I would just say this. I know 99% of the athletes out there can't be a better broadcaster than me because I went to school and learned it. I, mean, I don't mean Arthur, anything. Shaq, maybe they're the exceptions. Most stink because they don't give hardcore opinions. They're just looking to play grab ass with the athletes that they used to be teammates with. True. That, hey, it, very true because you don't want to cross that line of uh, you know getting too hard on it. But at the same time, we are we in your field. Athletes are in your field. We're doing this together. I know. Howard Cosell warned everyone about this decades ago. It's called jockocracy. 
Hey, Ryan Clark is great at it though. These guys are in. Yes, ESPN is paying, ESPN is paying seven figures. Brian Mitchell, guys. another guy who's worked hard at his. Yeah, so I think I just think that it's, you know, you watch all these shows. That guys are, uh, I think guys really enjoy talking about the game, and you know, if they're gonna pay you to do it, <laughs> wow. why not? I mean, you got that McAfee. McAfee is one of the top podcasts. He's a kicker. Okay, he was a good, he was a kicker. I mean, like, Hunter, like, Hunter. Like, yeah, same thing. Yeah, Hunter, you're right. Kicker, yeah. Same thing. So he it's like you know, and he has problem. one of the he has one of the best ones. So it's like you know, but to go the other way, and you see, there's Pro versus Joe's. So I think it's, they need to bring that back. It was one of the greatest <laughs> shows ever. Bring yeah. back Pro versus Joe's because again, it's I, I think it's uh, it's for both sides. It's liberating for the fan to get that opportunity to try, and I think it's good for the athlete to understand that. Not everybody can just walk onto this field or anything and do it. You can't. And there's a Sorry. reason you're in the 1% and the salaries are what they are because right. it's specialized. I, I, I tell people this all the time. There's 20, there's 52 people now in uniform that play every single day. There is what the smallest stadium is 37,000. Like they even said this in the, in the history of baseball, the smallest stadium is 37, five. I think it's Tampa there. Tampa would still not be a sellout if the baseball players who ever played Major League Baseball sat in that stadium. Still wouldn't be a sellout, even if you add their fans that came to the game too, because they ain't getting nobody. So it's like, you, we, you're we, you not one of us, and it's it's not a bad thing. It's the hardest thing. It's one of the hardest things to do is to be a professional athlete. One of the funniest responses I saw in closing was, well, you couldn't be a brain surgeon. And then you responded, well, you couldn't hit a baseball. So something of along this lines. Along I could be lines. a brain, I could be a brain surgeon. I can go back to school and be a brain surgeon. There were some cornerbacks. Um, I forgot his name, but he went back and he's a he's a brain surgeon. Like we can do that, but you cannot play baseball. Once you get about 20. <laughs> you're not doing it like you have to do this from from being a teenager a kid a teenager and if you like if right now if we were to switch roles switch jobs with somebody out there in the street we could i, I could do their job better than they could do mine and, and again as brain uh, doing a brain surgeon that is one of the anything medical is extremely difficult and i respect the hell out of that and i wouldn't even want to dabble in that because you're really playing with somebody's life but if most of these jobs out there if you were to put uh, an athlete in that situation, in that job, they would get more production out of that than you would playing their job because you're going over four with four strikeouts, and you're not. You, you're definitely going to misjudge a ball. You're going to make some errors. I want to put you at third base too. You go. I mean, <laughs> go to be, be a catcher. You know what I mean? Like you're gonna you, you make it tough, and it's just the reality of it. So it's just like I said, we need to idolize our athletes more. Instead of just he struck out, he sucks. He had a home run. Oh, it's great! You're riding such a roller coaster with these dudes, and like, like just we need to get back to the idolization of them because, you know, you're naming your kids after them. Adley, I just Adley and Gunner, that's going to be the two biggest names in Baltimore for the next decade. So, um, you know, there's a lot of kids out there named Adam. There are yeah. a lot of kids named Adam. Not in Baltimore, and definitely not named oh, after I me. I can tell you that. You just don't understand the implications where it's tied into you. They weren't named after me, and Adam is a very normal, neutral name. But no one's ever said, I named my kid Adam after you. No, people say I named my dog Jonesy. Oh, damn dog. <laughs> named my cat Jonesy. Oh, my cat's name is – uh, my dog's name is Scoby and Manny. But my kid's name is Brady and Cal and Adley and Gunner. But, All right. yeah, come on. Care about your parrot? It doesn't take brain surgery to do a podcast, mm -hmm. but it does scramble our brains every week. And uh, we appreciate – Everyone tuning in. 100%. And again, it's respect for every job. You know what I mean? Like, again, I have a highly respect for every, for all fields. I mean, one of the hardest jobs is to be a waitress. That's a very hard job. I see people holding them different things all up here. I've dropped, I've got a whole one plate with two hands. The balancing so, and, act. Yeah. Exactly. So, I, and I, again, I, I said that because I wanted the conversation, but I highly respect all fields. I mean, like Chip, what he does, I can't do that. How he makes this, compresses it, and do it. I don't know what the hell he does. It's right, like, don't get carried away. Don't get carried right. away. You don't want to give Chip no credit? 
Uh, well, maybe coming up we will. But first, we want to thank our loyal, dedicated sponsors who make the Adam Jones Podcast possible. Please go out and support the following. The Adam Jones Podcast is brought to you by our friends at the Weinman Company. Everyone knows Green Mountain Station in Hampstead. But did you know that at Green Mountain Station, you can bet seven days a week just like you're at the track? With in-person teller windows and state-of-the-art touchscreen kiosks. And with Green Mountain Station's brand new Bet Park Sports Book, you can bet on all other sports as well. Wherever you are in Maryland, spreads, money lines, live bets, prop- Props, parlays, and teasers. The Bet Parks Maryland mobile app is now live for Apple and Android devices, so you'll never miss your next big score. Just search for Bet Parks MD in the Apple App Store or on Google Play. And for a limited time, 21 and over Adam Jones podcast listeners can get a $75 gift card to Greenmount Station simply for opening a new account with promo code GMS and a minimum $50 initial deposit. $75 gift card for new users in Maryland only. 21 and over only. Please play responsibly. For help, call 1 800 Gambler. The Adam Jones podcast is brought to you by. Jimmy's Famous Seafood, Charm City's favorite crab cake destination. Local sports fan? Experience the ultimate pregame party at the tailgate. Cheer on the Ravens with iconic live performances, an open bar, and mouth-watering eats. Can't make it? No worries. Bring the same food that caught the attention of the Food Network right to your doorstep. Shipping East Coast recipes nationwide. Jimmy's Famous Seafood is the official sponsor of the guests appearing on the Adam Jones Podcast. Maryland Lottery. Because fun looks good on you. Right now, play our exciting new multiplier scratch offs for a chance to win up to $2 million. If you received ERC funds, listen closely. The IRS has 10 years to audit your claim, but you only have until March 22nd to get taxpayer relief, and the clock is ticking. If you're losing sleep over a possible audit, we'll review your claim. If you made a filing error, we'll set things right. If you're being audited, we'll provide expert representation. The IRS Voluntary Disclosure Program ends March 22nd. You deserve peace of mind. Visit SaveMyERC.com to schedule a consultation today. That's SaveMyERC.com. Effective solution. Solutions, your one-stop shop for commercial contracting. Everything from excavation and site development to emergency remediation and restoration. Effective Solutions specializes in many forms of commercial and mixed-use construction. With a dedicated staff and a commitment to quality, Effective Solutions delivers every time. There are a lot of ways to make whiskey, but there's only one way to make Jack Daniels. At Jack Daniels, they charcoal mellow every drop, only using water from Cave Spring Hollow in Tennessee. When you make your own label, you make everything else yours too. But we don't need to tell you that, do we? Make it count. Jack Daniels. Please drink responsibly. Tennessee whiskey, 40% alcohol by volume. Jack Daniel Distillery, Lynchburg, Tennessee. Jack Daniels and Old Number 7 are registered trademarks 2022. Jack Daniels, all rights reserved. The Adam Jones Podcast welcomes Relief Shop. Shop Maryland's largest adult use and medical cannabis menu located at 1114 Cathedral Street in Baltimore with medical delivery available throughout Maryland seven days a week only at Relief Shop. Your fun awaits at Hollywood Casino Perryville. Feed the whole crew with something for everyone from cheesesteaks to crab cake sandwiches. Plus, ask how you can get a $15 dining credit. Get in on the gaming action with the hottest slots and your favorite table games like blackjack, roulette, and poker. Free live shows every Friday and Saturday. Come experience nonstop fun and excitement only at Hollywood Casino Perryville. Hey, Baltimore. Monument City Brewing has been crafting the best beer in Maryland since 2014. Located at 1 North Haven Street in Baltimore, you've seen us at the ballpark. Now drop by our tasting room. Open Thursday through Sunday with events, music, and great food trucks. And this year, we are honored to collaborate with Adam Jones and the Adam Jones Podcast with Simply AJ Ballpark IPA, available throughout the baseball season. It's going to be a great year, Baltimore. Visit us online at MonumentCityBrewing.com or follow us on Instagram at Monument City Brewing. Hey, you work hard, I work hard, and we all like to save money. That's why we need the Royal Farms Rofo Rewards app to get more value for our hard-earned money. With the app, you earn royalty points on every purchase, can place mobile orders for quick pickup, plus a discount at the gas pump with Rofo Pay. We all like to save money, and with the Rofo Rewards app, we do. Real fresh, real fast, Royal Farms. 
It's the perfect time to check out a spacious and reliable new Toyota SUV. Like a RAV4, with available all-wheel drive and plenty of cargo space, you'll go from errands to adventures in no time. Plus, available features like wireless charging will keep you connected. Or check out a Highlander with seating for up to eight. It's a hub for family adventure. Your Toyota dealer is getting new vehicles in stock regularly. So don't wait. Find deals on a RAV4 or Highlander at buyatoyota.com. Toyota, let's go places. The Bowie Bay Sox are back in town this week. This weekend on Friday and Saturday nights, enjoy the area's best fireworks show following the Bay Sox game. And Sunday, come out early on Sunday Family Fun Day. Fans can play catch in the outfield grass and get autographs from select Bay Sox players. With free parking and a great game day atmosphere, the Bay Sox lead the region in affordable family fun. Get your tickets today at BaySox.com. Thanks to senior executive producer Chip Franklin for putting this latest episode together. Chip loves to tell jokes, usually the same ones again and again and again. Go out and subscribe to the Baltimore Banner. Until next week, be kind, be real, and make sure to be back next week for another edition of the Adam Jones Podcast.